What is going on YouTube? It's your boy Spanko and today I'm excited because I'm bringing you guys a Dinomorphia deck profile that I think is really competitive and can keep up with today's format. Now this build of Dinomorphia is a little bit different than your typical builds but I think this build is very very powerful and I think you need to be playing it similar to this if you guys want to compete and stay up to speed with today's format. Now if you guys do enjoy these videos make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh content just like this one. We upload five days a week here on the channel. Deck profiles, combo videos, do replays all that good stuff you'll find it right here on the channel we recently just hit 8,000. thank you guys all so much for that the next goal is 10,000. i know we can make it happen so make sure you guys like and make sure you guys do subscribe if you enjoy so you can stay up to date and stay tuned for all the new stuff with that being said though i hope you guys enjoy it with that Let's get into the deck profile. All right, so just before we get started in today's video, I do want to say the thing that I really love about Dino Morphia is that it's a trap-based deck that doesn't actually have to play only based off of its traps. It has a lot of synergy with a lot of the best cards in today's format, which I think is really cool, and that's why I wanted to be showing it off to you for today's video. So with that being said, let's get right into the deck profile. Of course, we are starting off with three Dino Morphia Theresia, as well as three Dino Morphia Diplos. These are cards that you have to be playing at three just because you want to be using them over and over. Diplos is not the greatest card Card. The Rezia is obviously a very powerful card for you. It's your best normal summon. However, I will say the thing is you can't play less than three Diplo in a deck like this one, especially in a more or less pure build. And that's because you need the names because without the names, you're not going to be able to get access to your fusion monsters. And it's really important to be playing three and three. Now you guys might be noticing I'm actually not playing miscellaneous Saurus. The reason I'm not playing miscellaneous is because I just never found a need where it's actually really that good. Now, yes, it protects your monsters here and there. But the thing is outside of the targeted negation, if you're talking about like a Sulik, right? Sulik is I think the only real negate in today's format miscellaneous is not that great even something like a Pirlarino for its pop effect your opponent is going to have a very hard time getting that pop effect off if you're setting up your board anyways so i chose not to play the miscellaneous source however i will say this there's a card here called by the grave i'm playing the one called by the grave you guys can cut the call by the grave play a miscellaneous source here instead it's still going to be 40 cards you don't need to be playing called by i just want to give you guys that heads up right now i'm not playing misc i never found a need every time i drew misc it actually didn't feel that good especially because we're going to be fusion summoning a lot of the time on our opponent's turn anyways it never really felt that good having that misc so if you guys want to play the misc play it i still think it's a very powerful card but i don't think you need it in this deck all right i'm just gonna put that out there for you guys however we are of course playing three of each of the fusion spells we're playing three dinomorphia frenzy as well as three dinomorphia domain these are mandatory three ofs you need to be seeing these cards if you're seeing just one of them especially in a format like today's format where not a lot of people are on ash blossom ash was one of the worst hand traps against this deck and by against this deck i mean one of the worst hand traps that this deck can run into because if your opponent ashes your frenzy or your domain keep in mind the life point thing that you do is a cost right so it's a life point cost it's not an effect so even if you activate this card and they have ash you're still paying 4,000 life points potentially 2,000 depending on where you are in the game and it is kind of painful if that happens but ash is not running around that crazy in today's format so these cards really get off all the time without having any problems and then we're also playing one alert as well as one sonic now brute is a card that i used to play i'm actually not playing brute anymore the reason for that is because i really wanted to focus this deck for today's format and specify against what the best decks are in today's format and tier limits is obviously one of the best decks if not the best deck of the format and full Andres is also another really powerful deck right so how do we beat those two decks well luckily this deck has its own main deck skill drain in rexstrom which is very very powerful and that's really good against both matchups however the thing is this main deck especially going second you need to be able to play against those kind of decks so why play more traps and this is the thing that i like about dinomorphia why play more traps where if i'm going second i'm kind of in a bad position where i can just play hand traps and then even if i'm going first or going second these cards are still going to be relevant so we're playing three ash blossom of course to deal with the full on Dries matchup it also is pretty good into the tier lemans matchup especially if you get it on with something else like if you have an ash plus a bestial monster you're in such a good spot so even though ash on its own is not that crazy against the tier limit matchup it's still a very very powerful card especially because you might not always just play tier limits yes tier limits is the best deck but you might play some rogue decks and ash is also really good against a lot of the rogue decks same thing with impermanence we're playing three infinite impermanence imperm is really really powerful against the full on Dries matchup the sprite matchup it's really good going second if you draw it as your sixth card to help you break boards if your opponent puts up a baguska or something like that whatever it is whatever your opponent puts up that you may have trouble outing imperm kind of helps you out that so imperm is really cool because it's a board breaker for you but it's also a really good card where if you draw it going first you can just set your traps and then have that imperm as one of the traps as well so it's still another form of disruption for you so i really like three ash three imperm these cards are obviously in their own really powerful but again if you draw them in combination with one of your bestial monsters you're in such a good spot so here we're playing three bestial magnum three bestial jerusalem as well as three bestial sauron here the reason we're playing nine bestials honestly is because you need these in today's format they're really good against a lot of different decks these cards are obviously something that's very mandatory
Tori Magnum Moot's gonna get you extra cards to your hand. Julius Worm is gonna be a send for you. And uh, Sarnia, you're never really gonna use the effect in this deck specifically. You don't really want to as much, but you still have to max out on these because they are really powerful. And the one thing this deck kind of struggled with is putting out enough damage to actually beat your opponent. Yes, this deck is really good at its setup at putting up the negates and putting up all that other stuff that it does. It doesn't put up negates. It puts up a skill drain. Let's be honest. It's a skill drain, but negates the whole field, right? So that's the thing that this deck's really good at. However, the thing is because you're paying so much life points, you want to be able to win the game. And a lot of that is just solved by the bestial monsters because you're putting up some pretty big bodies. Now the bestial monsters and the Dynamorphia monsters actually work pretty well together because they're all dark. So you can play floodgates like those in match, which I'll get into in a minute, but you can play cards like this without any issue. So I really like playing the nine bestials and you guys might be wondering, okay, well against the full Andres matchup, this deck cards kind of suck. You know, the bestial cards kind of suck against the full Andres matchup. The really cool thing is it's exactly nine cards. So when you're side deck, you can always side nine cards in for nine cards out. Now I'm not going to be showing you guys a full side deck. You guys can see the side deck there. It's obviously not a full side deck, but it's just something that I want to show you guys that you guys can play. Even the matches are also another one that's not there that you guys can also side deck. But the thing is, with against the full Andres matchup, you're always going to take out these nine. Obviously, Ash and Imperm is really good against them, so you would keep these. But you take out these nine, and you guys can put in Judgments, Gekis, uh, Lightning Storm, Cyclones. All these cards are really good. Stalem Judgment, of course, going first. All of these cards over here going second against the Full Andres matchup. So you guys can take all the nine out and then put in nine in here, right? So just keep that in mind. The Beast Seals are really good into a lot of different matchups. That's why you have to be main decking them. But against the Full Andres matchup, don't worry. Games two and games three, you just side all nine out and you side in anti-flu stuff, right? So uh, you have to be playing these. I know I kind of went in depth with that, but I think this synergizes and these cards are just really, really powerful against a lot of the metagame. And this deck, again, struggles with putting out damage and these cards help you put out damage, right? Then we're playing the one called by the grave like i said earlier you guys can play miscellaneous source instead of called by here if you wanted to but it's just another option i i think the call by is pretty cool so i really like to play this it's kind of like a ninth bestial monster honestly so i really like the one called by the one harpy's feather duster i still like playing this in the main deck this was actually the 40th card so i was at 38 for a while and then the 39th and the 40th card were these two i think it's very justified to be playing harpies in today's format again one of the only cards that tier limits actually has an out for against this deck is a Suleek. so if you just get rid of the Suleek and you get rid of the pierre Lorino, then they're kind of in a tough position so i like playing this in the main deck and then we're playing three fossil dig of course because all your dynamorphia monsters are dinos so you're going to be playing three fossil dig and then we're playing three prosperity as well because you want to be getting into your fusion traps as fast as possible so we're playing prosperity now the really cool thing about this deck is if you guys don't have access to prosperity you guys can play extravagance as well there's nothing wrong with playing extravagance in this deck extravagance is still a really really powerful card so if you guys wanted to play extravagance you guys can do that as well it's not a huge issue prosperity digging six so that you can specifically pick the frenzy or the domain is pretty relevant though but i like prosperity you guys can go extra as well up to you you still need to be playing the three draw cards at least and then we're playing three goes and match of course because goes and match synergizes really well with this deck they're all dark monsters your fusion monsters here are all dark monsters so goes in is just very very powerful especially into a lot of the different rogue matchups so i really like goes and match it's also not bad into tier limits not bad into other decks as well and it's actually pretty good against the full Andres matchup as well so keep that in mind so goes in is another really cool thing and that rounds off the entire 40 card main deck i actually really really like this main deck again the only one change you can maybe make is play a miscellaneous over the called by but i really really like this main deck i wouldn't change this up because 40 cards very consistent it's exactly what you need and i want to say one more thing actually before we move on to the extra deck real quick i actually was really considering playing cards like different dimension ground you can even play dimensional shifter in this you can play a lot of cards that are anti-tier in that sense but the reason i chose not to is because a lot of the time you actually kind of want your dynamorphia monsters or your cards in general to be in the graveyard and so for that reason even though you can play shifter you can play ddg it does kind of hurt you as well so that's kind of why i decided not to play those and just play the hand traps instead and i still think the hand traps are really powerful and in testing they've been amazing for me so that's it for the main deck it's a 40 card main deck moving on to the extra deck though we are playing of course three rexstrom three catrogena as well as two of the stealth bergia i think you need to be playing these ratios a lot of the time maybe you'll get rid of one and one just because you're using the prosperity but generally you have to be playing three and three these are your best cards rexstrom is obviously your boss monster of the deck so you're playing three rexstrom three catrogena a lot of the time in the late game cat will always be around 3k if this card gets negated at any point in the game it stays at 4k which is very powerful and then stealth bergia is honestly just mostly the thing that you make to get into rexstrom so when you're using something like frenzy you'll just send the stealth bergia it's not something you're actually making a lot of the time it's just a bridge to rexstrom so that's why you're playing the two and then we're playing two dolka 
two Logia, we're playing the two Dark as well as the one Unicorn. These are just some standard cards over here that you guys can play. A lot of the time, one Dolka, one Logia, one Dark will usually just be Prosperity Fodder. Another card you guys can play that I'm not playing in here is Wallow. Wallow is a rank six that a lot of the time you can make with your Bestial Monsters. You guys can play that in here as well. Maybe cut a Dark, maybe cut a Logia, something like that. But the extra deck doesn't too matter too much outside of these guys over here because this is your win con essentially. You can sit on the Bestial Monsters with these guys and you're pretty much winning the game. Now, I'm not showing you guys a side deck, but like I said earlier, you guys can be playing a lot of anti Floundries cards. And the reason for that is because your main deck is just so tailored to go against and beat the tier limits matchup that you really want a way to beat the Floundries matchup. And again, Goza match is still pretty good into the Floundries matchup. Rexdrum is good into the Floundries matchup. So it's not like this deck can't play against that matchup. But when you are going second, it does present some problems. And of course, Bisted Monsters don't do anything against Floundries going second. So for that reason, you're just playing a bunch of go second cards that are really good into the Floundries matchup. So I actually just would play these nine cards over here. Solemn Judgment is good going first against pretty much everything so i like playing the three judgment and then uh i you have three slots to play around with if you guys want to try evenly match if you guys want to try i don't know maybe something else to go first because going second this deck has a pretty good time with all the hand traps so maybe something else going first but again i really like this deck it's really powerful going first because you set up your plays into rexdrum a lot of decks can't handle the rexdrum and then going second you have all the hand traps to be able to play so i really like this deck i'm really excited to be showing it to you guys because i think dinomorphia is one of those decks that hasn't been talked about enough in today's format but it has access to a lot of really powerful cards and they all just synergize really well so i think you guys should definitely try this build out so that is it for today's video i hope you guys did enjoy i think you guys can see why i play the cards that i play in this deck it's really all just built and strategized so that we can beat the best decks of the format which right now are tier limit and floundries but you're also going to be able to do all the dinomorphia plays because at the end of the day if you open one of the traps you're ending on rexdrum you have your bestial monsters you're in a really good position so i think this deck is very very powerful especially also because ash blossom is not that relevant in today's format and ash blossom not being played as much means your trap cards are always going to go through which is really really nice for you so i hope you guys enjoyed today's video if you guys did make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more new content just like this one a couple of five days a week here on the channel deck profiles combo videos dual replays all that good stuff so make sure you guys subscribe to stay tuned into all of that we're on the road to 10,000 subscribers thank you guys all so much i really do appreciate every single one of you i hope you guys have the greatest new year i know we're not there just yet but we're about to get there and really make sure sure you guys set your goals and make sure you guys stick to them our goal to get here as a community for spanko is 10,000, and i know you guys can make it happen so thank you guys all for watching and with that spanko signing out peace Get up, get up, we want you to get